Hey everyone, it's Wally Dellenbach coming to you with segment number two of How to Restore a Ludwig Stainless Steel Shell. This is a Chicago Ludwig Stainless Steel Shell, of course, and um, it's a 12 by 15 shell and it's due for restoration. I traded uh, this uh, for a bass drum. These are kind of hard to find. Uh, it's got large classic lugs. I've got a couple of these, but um, they are modified concert toms, meaning that they have this, the mini lugs on top and somebody took and drilled for the mini lugs on the bottom. So, yuck. Uh, so this is the real McCoy. Pretty cool. So, uh, the Ludwig stainless steel shell is about 80,000 thick, and that's going to be important here as I discuss um, through buffing the shell. Now, what I have before me here is, uh, these, these are buffing compounds. One is a coarse and one is a fine for finishing. This is a hard, uh, aggressive cut and this is a finishing cut. So it's got to do with its coarseness, okay? Uh, these buffing compound bars are made out of uh, alumina, which is aluminum oxide and grease. It binds it all together. And uh, it's a, probably a good thing that you have good ventilation and a dust mask on when you buff your shell, okay? You always want to be safe. Don't want to breathe anything that's going to get caught in your lungs permanently. Aluminum uh, kind of does have a binder in it, and you don't want to be breathing that. Okay, so a little safety tip for you. Now, where do you get this? You go online, and uh, you go to McMaster.com. So it's McMaster. It's actually McMaster Car, but uh, Mc, it's, the website is McMaster.com. And in your search engine, just type buffing compound, and these will come up. And they'll come up for aluminum, copper, brass, steel, uh, stainless steel, and fiberglass and plastic as well. So, um, these are about 10 bucks, 9 bucks to 12 bucks maybe at the most per bar. They're 3 pound bars. And... Um, Call up McMaster Car. There's a phone number on their website. Have a credit card ready, and they'll ship it out to you. I mean, they're really accommodating. Okay, so that's an introduction to the buffing compound bars, where to get them, and what's in them. Okay, we'll set this aside now. And now let's slide this up here. This is the um, wet dry sandpaper. And what I do is I use about, I start off with maybe 800 grit to 1,000, uh, depending on the cut, okay, or scratches that are in this. Now, I, I said earlier that your shell thickness is about 80,000 thick, okay? And as you, I've already been buffing on this shell, so um, from here on out, the rest of the videos, when, I, when we go out to the buffer, um, for the most part, the shell is done. It'll just be for demonstration purposes only. And it turned out really nice. I'm really satisfied with the outcome. But uh, anyway, now with the wet-dry sandpaper, you're going around your shell, you've kind of washed it off, and you're prepping it and getting ready to start doing the wet-dry pro uh, sanding process. I don't use water, soap and water because it's just a little bit too messy, and of course the water evaporates. So what I do is I use uh, regular household oil as uh, kind of helps... It stays in one place, it doesn't drip all over, and um, it's, it's pretty clean for the most part. It does kind of absorb into your hands, and uh, you know, you might want to have some plastic gloves on at least, or uh, neoprene, whatever that stuff is made out of, vinyl, or who knows what that stuff is made out of. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little household oil on this thing, and I uh, don't want to make too much of a mess because I'm in my house, and uh, gosh, I trade buffing a drum here in my acrylic drum and I got buffing compound all over my wall she's okay so household oil 600 or I'm sorry 800 grit wet dry sandpaper and what you do and you can get yourself an orbital sander to do this um, one of the square square bottom sand sanding things are probably only about 20 bucks maybe and just kind of start to work in an area that's now, you'll recall in the first video, um, here by my badge, can you see that? Up here, there's where the badge and there's where the muffler is, tone control. Off to um, 4 o'clock, I guess, if you will, there was a real tarnished, scruff, uh, scuffed up, kind of a, like a, a real bad blemish. And uh, it came out real nice, but I'm still, you know, kind of 
I'll just work on this area because that was kind of like my worst surface on this whole drum shell. So um, when you really think about it, gosh, this is uh, 12 inches by 15 inches in diameter, and uh, that's probably about what three and a half, four foot of uh, square foot, three, three to four square foot of uh, surface area that you've got to work with, and that's a lot, man. That's, gosh, think about doing a bass drum, man. That's brutal. A lot of work. Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. So that was my 800 grit, and I'm going to go to 1,000 grit. I've already got oil on this, and I'll give that a little bit of a... And that's just how you do it. It's real easy. Uh, it's not really time-consuming. But just remember, so you have a shell that's 80,000 thick, and say you've got a cut in there that's 20,000 thick, and you, you're going to be really fanatical and angle, anal about getting that scratch out. And you're going to you're going to sand away 20,000 thickness, you know, of your of your shell, trying to get rid of that thing. That's just don't do that, okay? Just appreciate the scratch for what it is. You can sand it out. Now, of course, the wet dry sanding process is a material removing process, okay? And you'll be able to. There's there's scratches still in this, and I'm gonna I'm not going to try to get rid of them. I'm not going to sand them out because I don't want to. Um, compromise my th shell thickness, okay? I don't want to do that. So that's that's basically that, okay? Um, so this is segment number two. I'm going to try to keep these short because the upload time or the download time into to YouTube, man, is just... If they're long videos, man, it takes forever. So keep them short. The upload, download time, whatever is minimum. Okay, now, and... Uh, so segment number three, we're going to go outside. I'm going to introduce you to the buffer. It's just a bench top buffer, you know, with a couple of uh, cloth wheels that are smashed together. You buy them at any uh, local hardware store. Now, you can, of course, get um, the buffing wheels on McMaster car. I, I'm not in the business of doing this, and um, I've just got a bench top grinder. It's on a pedestal, and uh, it, it suits my needs. I've already done two, a couple of drum sets and some oddball shells here and there. It suits my need. If I was in the business of restoring stainless steel drums, I'd have an industrial buffer, and uh, it would do for me what I want, and probably half the time, if not less. So, yeah, the smaller the buffer, too, the, the more time you extend into buffing your shell. So with that, an introduction to how to get your, where to get your buffing compound, what's in it, the wet dry sanding process. I always use household oil and uh, 600 grit to 1000 grit. Okay, six is, 600 is your coarse, 1000 grit is your finer sand. And just remember, if you go in there and start plowing in there with 400 grit sandpaper, the deeper you start to cut in the shell, the more, the harder you're gonna have to work to get rid of those scratches, okay? So just a little bit of effort, always be patient, always know what you're in for. And that's why I'm doing these videos is just because uh, people see, uh, you know, I'm all over Facebook and see all these drum restoration people are doing. It's just kind of like the home remodeling shows. You watch those TV programs, everything is always clean, everything is always organized, everything is already cut, and they just hammer it in the place and bada bing, you know, you've got a house built in a half hour segment. It doesn't work that way, okay? These take time, consideration, thought, you know, so you've, you've got to approach it in that way, okay? Be patient, okay? So until next time, everybody be cool, and uh, peace. Take care, bye.